Everybody so far away. Ten feet. No, no, no. Come closer. Don't be afraid. So, guys, welcome to episode 46 of the daily antivirus edition of Roll with the Fox. It's a mouthful. So, today, we're wearing black and blue. So, can anybody guess what the theme of today will be? Black and blue. Nothing? Crickets, guys? All right, so before you start feeling bad for Enrique, <laughs> let me tell you something. I know it's every once in a while somebody said, don't hurt Enrique, don't beat him up too much. I don't bruise easily. If you crack me in the, in the eye, if you don't cut me, I will not have a bruise. I don't bruise easily. Last week, I had bruises all over me. There's only one person they could come from. So before you start feeling too bad for him, understand. He's very strong. Slightly bigger than me, but very strong. Although he's losing. He's losing his gains. So guys, today, what we're going to do is we're going to work on, two, uh, on, on, on a different concept. Did anybody, by the way, figure out what was on, on my tape yesterday? The hint is, if you go on YouTube, and if you enlarge the thumbnail, did I say it right, Mike? Thumbnail? Yes. <laughs> See, guys, I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, what do you call it? Up, oh, Caleb Throop got it. Yes, huh? Caleb Throop got it. Yeah? Yeah, he's cool. So, guys, it's, you gotta give him a handshake. Yeah, here's my soft internet handshake. When we can see each other in person, you're gonna get a firm handshake in person. So, congratulations, Caleb. You got it, guys. Double attack. So, there is, uh, in, in Jiu Jitsu, sometimes we use sequential. Uh, attacks, okay, meaning where, you know, as he's taking things away from me, I'm going to do a sequence, okay, I, I continue going after him. And sometimes you're in a position to have literally two submissions at the same time, and it's, those of you who have trained with me and know my game is, if, if I ever catch you in there, usually I try to give the person a choice which one they're going to get nailed with. So, for takedown, guys, I know I'm going to be, we're going to, for takedown, I'm going to use a sequential attack. But then we're going to go to the ground and we're going to work on double attack. All right? So one of the things somebody asked me, it's like, what is some of your favorite takedowns? My, my favorite takedowns are usually those that are relatively low risk if I screw it up. I want to get the match or the fight to the, to the ground as quickly as possible and as advantageously as possible to me. I don't really care whether I'm on top or the bottom. If I'm not, if I'm on the bottom, I'm not in a position to be hit. I'm not in a position for the, him to start, you know, passing my guard. And I haven't tied up at least his his arm, usually his arm and, and head. I will perfectly take the bottom position. The other thing is, I know a lot of the wrestling uh, uh, takedowns. You have to lower your your level. I will lower my level. Once my knee touches the ground, I'm staying on the ground, guys. I, th that's not. My advice to you but that's what I'm doing so let me go through the sequence where I go what I'm looking for is I'm looking for so we stand up I got my grips I'm loading it retail okay so I'm loading him on and then I'm stepping in and dry this is what I'm looking to do okay not the easiest thing in the world to do to a savvy guy all right so if I get it great if I don't so as I'm loading him on, as I'm stepping in, I'm a little too late, he steps out. I'm gonna shift his body position and I'm gonna wind up with a single. From the single, guys, you can take him down forward, backwards, a lot of different ways. You can run the pipe. There's a lot of, there's a different variety of things you can bring him down from there. And the third one is, as, if I make him step, and I step in, my, my knee hits the ground, and as he steps out, before I have a chance to take him down, I will just fold into an arm lock. So that's the sequence that is one of my favorite sequences for takedowns. And what it does, it teaches you to continue with the attack, even if, if you know, some of the elements are taken away from you. So again, Load him on. That's okay. I keep going. Yes. 
So again, guys, you have to stay on him. If you're going after him, stay on him. So I will him on. Now my knee hits the ground. If I can drive, I will take him down. Okay? If I can't, I'll go for single, you know, and then depending on how he's standing, I take him down. And last one, while we're almost stepping, he steps out straight into a very tight arm lock. Okay? So that's a good sequence for you guys to work where you stay with the attack, no matter what. I aimed to hit the first takedown, but you saw it. Enrique stepped out too fast. I didn't, you know, you don't miss the beat, you go for the single. Do we have any questions on this, Mike? No questions as of yet. Okay. So that's an example of sequential attack. Okay. And I recommend you guys, especially when you start to get to higher levels, attack in sequences. You know, I always intend to get hit the first one. But if he takes it away from me, I take his defense against him. If he takes it away from me, again, I continue with the attack until I finish him with a sub or sweep, and then, then I, I may go into a different sequence. Depends, you know. If I finish him, it's done, but if I don't, I will stay on him until I get into a dominant position, then I might switch the sequence. You know, just thinking about a baseball bat choke. <laughs> In my head. <laughs> so, let's look at the other um, type of equation, and that's uh, in a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Again, this doesn't happen all the time, but it happens a lot of times. For example, when you triangle somebody, uh, we talked about triangles being a form of control. You have the opportunity to attack the triangle. You have the opportunity to attack the arm at the same time. So you, yes, Mike. Uh, so you're let me finish my thought, will you? Well, I just held my. It's already out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Uh, Ricardo's uh, on yes. Facebook is asking how to get good grips when the opponent is avoiding the gripping game standing up. Um. You know, I, I, we, we talked about it, I, I forget which episode. I'm not gonna stand there playing patty cake forever. Uh, I will try to get good grips. If I can, I would just, uh, you know, so. Let's play patty cake. So we're, you know, I'm trying to grip, grip fighting. I'm just looking to get anything. That's one of the ones that, you know, I just got the grip. And now I just continue to drive into him. So once I, I, I don't look for a perfect grip. I just look to bring it to the, to the mat as soon as possible on my terms. If you look for a perfect grip, guys, I've been in some tournaments where literally the whole match, you know, if it's masters, five minutes, black belts could be 10 minutes. It's like this. Ten minutes. Uh, yeah, I understand. You know, it's better to win the world championship at, with an advantage than lose. But still, you know, came to win. So, you know, I'm a bit impatient guy. Why <laughs> are you So I usually don't necessarily wait for the perfect grips. I look for a good enough grip. If he gets better grips than I do, especially if you go to against, uh, you know, in Hanzo's, there's, there's a couple of elite ju judo guys that, that have been training there or have trained there, and you know, if they get dominant grips, I'm pulling. Because once you, once a ju like a lead judo guy gets dominant grips, you're gonna fly. If you let him use it, you're gonna fly. So I'd rather pull on my terms. Than, than be subject to, you know, unwanted flight. <laughs> and we have uh, check-ins from uh, Tokyo, Japan, Serbia, and Antarctica. 
<laughs> we also have... There will be a Serbian flag in Antarctica by now. We also have uh, Canada, California, Colombia, Par uh, Paramus, New Jersey. Guys, that's a good point. Remember, Colombia as in the universities with a U, Colombia as the country is two O's. So I know a lot of guys constantly confuse the two. I know it's not a huge thing, but I figured you might learn, as well learn something else besides jiu-jitsu. Go ahead. And uh, Vancouver, uh, Vernon, Venezuela, Wisconsin, and Steve uh, Rogla is asking, oh, Steve. do you have a follow-up if you lose the arm during the arm lock attempt? I don't lose it. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it is actually a good follow-up anytime you lose an arm lock where the guy is standing. So as I load him on, guys, don't forget, when you're loading him on, you can't do this. You're not getting any closer. So make sure your arm bends. When you're loading him on, your arm bends so you can bring him on. I step in, he steps out, and he rips out. Say hello to my little friend. With the gi, I would grab here. No gi, I would go by the hips. So, anytime, that, especially if the guy's standing, uh, rips out of an arm lock, I will switch into, uh, in, I start to invert. Worst case scenario, you wind up in a scramble. I don't want to be, uh, you should, when you have, as you get better in your game, you should not be where, uh, in a position where if the guy takes your attack away from you, your submission attempt, where you wind up in an inferior position where you get dominated. It should at the very least be a scramble back to sort of, sort of a, a, a neutral position. That should be sort of uh, your intention. So that should be your, that should, that should be your backup plan. And we also have checking in from England, India, uh, Passaic, New Jersey, Belleville, and South Africa. Nice. And uh, Steve responded, mind blown. <laughs> Say hi to Jamie. Uh, so guys, let's, uh, let's go back to the round. Let's go back to the, the idea of a double attack. So, Enrique is in my guard, and I go two on one, and I drag for an arm drag. So guys, again, it's very important. Uh, I can't just get it done like this. So I have to get my, my hips up, and as they're dropping, that's when I'm pulling, and my legs are bringing him forward. Now, what do I have here? Guys, my chest stays glued to do you think I can take Enrique's back from here? <laughs> Acoustic Jaybird says yes. Uh, it'd be very difficult. Everybody is saying yes. Oh, okay, guys, I appreciate those, the confidence, but it'd be very difficult here. And the reason for that is I'd have to prop my, I'm not propped up on my, on my elbow, so I'm not in a good position to take his back. So let's play it out. I'm gonna try to take his back. All right? So it's possible, but it's very difficult. Enrique would have to stay there for, a split second longer, so it would have to be something like this. Now I can take his back, okay? But that split second to a high level guy is gonna be, that's all he needs. Basically what they do is square up with you. So you have to make a, again, when you get here, when you get to this position, you have to make a split second judgment. I'm already feeling him reacting to the back take. 
All he's going to try to do is move his body. So it, rather than allow that to happen, okay, I'm going to let go of his sleeve. I'm going to weave my arm. So what it does, I'm over his right arm, under his left. All right? So can somebody tell me now, what, what do I have here? Can he retract his arms easily? Very difficult. So, in that split second, I made a judgment call. I caught him asleep at the wheel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to take his back. If I feel that he's, he's defending, yes, I decide to go for this quick. It looks like I have nothing, but I have a lot of stuff. I have literally have a double attack. Can somebody tell me what it is? Uh, Ricardo says omoplata setup. Valeri says armbar. Valeri, you're right. Not just one armbar, two. So from here, I can know he. I would grip, and I can go under his leg, guys. As long, I'm gonna pivot. Now, I have. You can cross your ankles. You can bring. Guys, look at this. This is an ugly arm lock, yes? I have the Urigatami on this side. But the one that I really want is the bottom. So right now I can go one, two, one, two, one, two, two, one. You should have stretched. I did. <laughs> Poorly. <laughs> so. This is a very good example of a double attack. I will attack the top arm, but the one I really want is the bottom arm. You could see, you could have your legs in the ugliest position you can imagine. And that arm lock is extremely tight. Okay? So, when you get are successful with an arm drag, and you can't take the guys back, you're going to weave over the your hand is there, all you're doing is just this. It's not like you sort of swimming through, you know, a forest of arms. When you drag him, his wrist is gonna be here, so I'll just swim underneath the far side arm, and now you're in a perfect position to implement this. All I need to do now is cut that angle. So if I'm lined up with him, I need to go more perpendicular, and he's done. You have Urigatame, and you have a more, more brutal attack on it, in this case, and on his bottom arm, which is the right arm, on his, in this case, the way we did it. All right, so let's look at it one more time. So, I drag. I realize he's already defending. So guys, my arm was here. It's not, a, it's not like I'm weaving here. All I'm doing is swimming. I'm gonna try to bring my left leg on the hip. If it doesn't, if you can't get it on the hip, guys, just pivot it out. Make sure he does not posture up. And I have. Does this look like a beautiful arm lock? No. No. I'm just trying to pass time while they're while they're responding. <laughs> The answer is no, it looks ugly, but it's very effective, all right? So that's an example, you could choose which, you could pick one or the other, it's up to you, whatever you want, but I usually, I try to go for, I go for the top arm, and he, he when you go for the top arm, a lot of times, so as I go, I go for the top arm, that allows me to get my angle for the bottom arm. Look, I can cross my feet. I can have them wide open. Look, no hands, guys. Okay? So, it is definitely not one of the prettiest arm locks. Is there such a, such a thing? Beauty contest among arm locks? <laughs> there are some beautiful arm locks. This is not one of them, but it is very effective, guys. It works very, very well. 
And you have, like I said, you have a choice of one attack or the other. And you don't have to make a lot of movement, you don't have to open up your legs. Omoplata is always a possibility there as well. But for that, guys, he has to change the direction, you have to open your legs, you have to pivot. So now you sort of start to give him an opportunity to escape. This, is, this keeps him nice and tightly packed the whole time. Then we're down to 10 minutes. <laughs> so what are you, any questions on this, Mike? Uh, Valeri on Facebook is asking, uh, is there a flower suite from there? Yes, there is too. Yes, absolutely. But I'd rather submit it. <laughs> but the flower sweep is there, so so if I'm if I'm if I if he's driving too far forward, say hello to my little friend. What's up? Absolutely, Valerie. There is there's a sweep. By the way, Sasha is, lear is learning to use Google Translate now. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't hide behind the fact that he doesn't speak English. That's what I do when I send him a message. I, I have Google Translate English into Russian. And Caleb Throop on YouTube is asking, uh, Enrique is preventing your back take with a grip on your shoulder. What if he prevents it controlling your bottom leg? Uh, belly down arm lock is the follow up or? Give me the scenario. <laughs> Can you keep it? Yeah, this is, yeah. This is a very strong grip. So especially with the Ginogi, I would, I would hold on here. I was watching Kung Fu movies on Sunday, Sunday late afternoons with the rainy day. <laughs> I think we, we, might, we might have competition for them with the sounds we make, or at least he makes. <laughs> Air escaping out of a tire. <laughs> All right, so that's one of, the, one of the positions where you can have a, a sort of a double attack at the same time. Um, the other one, this is a particular favorite of mine. We worked on some inverted triangles. One of them is, again, so Enrique, you know, I'm fighting and he passes my ball. As he's doing this, guys, I'm gonna get on my side, bring him down, and lock up the inverted triangle. Now, I could try to wait or squeeze to finish him with the inverted triangle. I, I know, like, I don't have to look at him, I know I have it right now, but, why not make it quicker? All right? So especially with inverted triangles, you have a lot of double attacks. You have uh, Kimura. Uh, the worst thing people can do is like sometimes they bring their, their hand, their hand trying to strip your legs. This is the worst possible thing they can do. If, you, if I can get a grip. I, no, what I'm trying to do is connect to a, a key lock, but. Enrique's flexibility doesn't currently allow him to do that. Live rolling, yes, but if he stretched better, maybe. Right now, it doesn't. So, it's a, it's a key lock, Kimura. The other thing you can also do from here is attack the legs. So, you know, this is one of them. Uh, a lot of times, people actually sit out on this to defend the leg, leg, leg attacks and makes that squeeze that much better. All right, so again, uh, guys, don't forget, um, this, is, this is a very effective way. You could judge how well do you have a, a triangle. It could be a straight triangle, it could be a reverse, it could be inverted. Um, once you make the judgment call, if you don't think it's, it's good enough, you should certainly attack the other body part that he's giving you for the, you know, for the secondary double attack. And Guys, don't forget to squeeze. We talked about this a couple of episodes ago where if he's squeezing, his, his mental and physical 
attention is on defending the chokes while his arm is flopping there in the wind or his leg in the wind or his leg is flopping there in the wind. So continue to you know, make sure that you continue to squeeze. Don't squeeze, don't, don't think like one or the other. You, you could do two at the same time. All right, so let's look at that sequence again. So he's passing my guard. I lock it up, okay? I realize it may not be the best or, you know, I'm in a rush. So I have a Kimura here, of course. For the, <laughs> I'm not a fan of wrist lock guys, but they're very effective. I usually use them to straighten out his arm. I can do one of these. He switched his arm. Guys, the reason I'm moving at a gingerly speed uh, is because I, I can't even connect. His, his arm is too tight. And the other thing you could do is always sort of attack his foot. Tap. If he sits out, but continue to squeeze throughout the whole sequence. So no matter what secondary double attack you choose, he continues to deal with the choke pressure on his neck. All right. Do we have any questions, Mike? I know we're pretty close to running out of time. So. <laughs> and lots of peers asking, uh, in regards to when you did the double arm lock, I find it very hard to take the opponent's arm to the other side with the gi, even though I'm big and strong. Don't let me bring it to the other side. A lot. I know you've seen 45 out of 45, 46 out of 46. What do you think I'm going to do if I, if he fights me to bring it to one side? Usually if he fights one side, the other side is open. So I wouldn't try to force it, especially if you're big and strong. Guys, as you get better and better in skill, you want to make sure you, you're also technical because that is the one thing you can continue to improve forever. You might get slower, you might get weaker, but there's one thing you can improve forever. This technique. You may not be able to execute it <laughs> as well, but it is one thing that you can... So as I'm pulling towards one side, he starts to pull back. So I feel what he's giving me. So if I'm pulling towards one side, oh yeah. We're going through the whole sequence. So I guess the, the point that I'm trying to make is don't get, okay, I decided to make an arm drag. Anytime you decide to do anything, if you have a worthy opponent, what I mean by worthy, it means somebody that's got some skill, that's got, you know, skill close to yours, you know, might be athletic, might be explosive. Uh, doesn't mean that they're worthy, but uh, if, they, if they're counting that specific move, they're usually giving you something else. So try to figure out what it is. You know, for this one in particular, I just gave you two looks. One is if, you, if he's resisting, if he's trying to bring his arm back, you go straight into split guard. If he's leaning, if he's pulling straight back, hip heist. Again, you may not hit, hit the hip heist. He's going to come back forward. So let's just play out to another, you know, now again, we're going back to, now we're going back to sequential attacks. But, so this time, you know, as I'm pulling, he's pulling back. So even if the hip heights fails, there's a tertiary attack, you know, that you can go with. So it becomes literally a human chess. You know, anytime the guy makes, you know, you make the move, you attack. He has to react. And if he doesn't react, then he's gonna get dragged. If he, does, if he reacts, you can either tuck it under the other armpit or you can hip heights. And off the hip heights, if you catch him with good technique, good timing, you're gonna be not mounted. Or, as he's driving you back, now you have a, you have a, a whole slew of, of follow-ups. You got guillotines, you got the Kimuras, 
You might be able to pivot out to become more perpendicular, attack another arm lock. So it, now it, it, it's, you're constantly attacking. He's, all he's doing is just like, crap, oh, and next thing you know, he's caught. And we're out of time. <laughs> Any last minute questions? We're good. All right, guys, I'm glad I explained it so we don't have any last minute questions. We got you finished on time today. So guys, stay well, stay safe, take care of others, and be considerate. Don't drive slow in the fast lane.